assalamu alaikum friends i hope all of you are fine uh, in today's lecture we are going to discuss about the uh, last part of the git which is called large intestine so let's discuss about large intestine large intestine right it is also an also known as gut it is also known as gut or it is also known as large bowel large bowel clear now friends as we know that our whole git is consisting of the tubing systems the largest tube is the large intestine clear so we can define large intestine as from the diagram i will define it as all of us know this is the connection between mouth and uh, stomach which is called esophagus and here is the bag of the git which is called uh, stomach then we have the duodenum which i have discussed in the previous lecture in detail duodenum then there is jejunum and ileum this is ileum now from here from here the the large tube the big tube of the git starts and this is called the large intestine right this is called the large intestine okay right now we say now we define uh, define a large intestine large intestine is the part of the git which begins at this junction and ends at here this part is called anus this is called anus external opening and here this is friends ileum this is ileum and the first part of the large intestine is called cecum the first part of the large intestine is called cecum and this is the the last part of the small intestine is called ileum and the first part of the large intestine is called cecum now large intestine begins at the this this junction and this junction is called ileo cecal junction right so what is large intestine large intestine is the portion of the git which begins at ileocecal junction and ends at the anus clear let's define it the the part of git the part of gastrointestinal tract which begins at ileocecal junction which begins at ileocecal junction and ends at anus and ends at anus this part of the this part of the git is called the large intestine that part once again which begins at the ileocecal junction and ends at anus this is called large intestine right uh, we will define large intestine in an other way that large intestine is the part of the git where from the digested food more water is absorbed right so absorption of water large amount of water are absorbed from the digested food in our large intestine so we say large intestine is the part of the git where from the digested food more and more water is absorbed right so we can say also that Uh, the part of git the part of git where where more water is absorbed where more water is absorbed from digested food clear this is another definition of large intestine and is the part of git where more water is absorbed from uh, the digested food right then we can also define 
large intestine as the part of GIT which helps in the defecation of uh, undigested food. So this is also this can also be defined in this way. But these are the two more uh, good definitions. The part of GIT which begins at the ileocecal junction and ends at the anus, or the part of GIT where more and more water is absorbed from the digested food. Clear? Now, what is the length of our large intestine? What is the length of the large intestine? So, friends, the length of large intestine is about 1.5 meters. Right? Its length is about 1.5 meter. And we are in the next uh, uh, top, in the next point, uh, we are going to divide this length in different sections. So, the total length of the uh, large intestine from here up to here, this is about 1.5 meters, right. What is the diameter of large intestine? Diameter of large intestine, okay. As we know, that large intestine has di different diameters at different points. What is the diameter of the large intestine at the beginning? Then what is the diameter of the large intestine in ascending point? What is the diameter in transverse, in the descending, in sigmoid region, in anal canal region, right? So the diameter is divided into different sections. So let's write the diameter. So friends, uh, I am going to divide this length as well as I am going to write the diameters of each part. Clear? So, uh, about diameter, we are dividing the large intestine into this first part of the large intestine is called cecum. Cecum. Right? So, here I am writing diameter, diameter, and here I am writing length. Clear. So, it means here is the part of the large intestine, here is its diameter and here is its length. Clear. So, the part, the, the, the first part of the uh, large intestine is called the cecum and its diameter is about uh, 9 centimeters. Its diameter is about 9 centimeter. So, the diameter of the large, the first part of the large intestine which is called cecum, it is about 9 centimeter. Its diameter is about 9 centimeter and its length is about 6 centimeter. Okay. So, from here, this is the first part of the large intestine. This is an imaginary diagram. The length of the cecum is about 6 centimeter and its diameter is about 9 centimeter. Here if we see friends, the diameter is little more than the length. Why? Because here from the ileum, more amount of large amount of foods are entering to the large intestine. So this first part of the large intestine catches food substances from the ileum. So it should have larger diameter, right? So here the diameter of the cecum is 9 centimeter and its length is little shorter which is 6 centimeter. Okay. Now we go, what is the diameter of ascending colon? What is the diameter of the second part which is called ascending colon? Right? What is the diameter here? And what is the length here? So, the diameter of the ascending colon is about 3.5, 6.35 centimeter. Now, we, you see here the diameter becomes, the diameter of the cecum is 9 centimeter. But the diameter of the ascending colon is reduced, right? Its diameter is about 6.35 centimeter. Now, the length, uh, its length uh, little increases. Its length is about 20 centimeter. Clear? So, the diameter of ascending colon is 6.35 centimeter and the length of the ascending colon is about 20 centimeter. Right? Now, we see number 3. What is the diameter and length of transverse colon? Transverse colon. This is the third part. 
right its diameter is about 6 cm the diameter of the transverse colon like this if this is the transverse colon so its diameter is about 6 cm and its length is its length little increases it is about 46 cm long 46 cm now look the diameter of ascend sorry transverse colon is 6 cm gradually decreases here the length gradually increases here the length of the cecum is 6 cm length of ascending colon is about 20 cm and length of transverse colon is 46 cm right then we go down further down what is the diameter of descending colon we are going down so descending colon right what is the diameter of descending colon so its diameter is about 7 centimeter again the diameter is increased its diameter is 7 centimeter and its length is about 25 centimeter clear so the diameter of the descending colon is 7 centimeter and its length is about 25 centimeter then we have the diameter of uh, the last part which is called the sigmoid sigmoid colon sigmoid colon its diameter is also 7 centimeter 7 centimeter and its length is about uh, 35 to 40 centimeter clear so these are the dimensions of the large intestine in its every part right cecum 9 centimeter 6 centimeter ascending colon 6.5 centimeter diameter 20 centimeter length transverse colon 6 centimeter diameter 46 centimeter length descending colon 7 centimeter diameter 25 centimeter length and sigmoid colon 7 centimeter diameter and 35 to 40 centimeter its length now friends let's notice something look here the last part of the large intestine the sigmoid colon the length is increased look here is 25 centimeter here the length increases why because it is because whenever our large intestine as you know ns is posteriorly so large intestine from here the, the descending colon up to here why its length increases the sigmoid colon length is increased why because from here it goes posteriorly it goes posteriorly and downward so its length little increases right these were the parts these were the dimensions of the large intestine now we come now we come what are the main parts of the large intestine main parts what are the main parts of the large intestine so these main parts let me make a diagram here uh, and we will mention all the main parts of the large intestine in this diagram so let's focus right this is the first part of the large intestine right this is the first part This, I hope I am making a better diagram that you could understand. Let me make it as it is originally. It goes little up here and comes down again. right so let's mention every part as you know here is the ileocecal sphincter as it is the ileum here is our ileum right so this is the first part and this part is called cecum this is part called the 
सी का राइट दिस आउटवर्ड प्रोजेक्शन दिस आउटवर्ड प्रोजेक्शन इज कॉल्ड दपेंडिक्स दिस इज कॉल्ड द अपेंडिक्स इनशाला we will discuss appendix in next lecture so this is the cecum as here the large intestine is going little up so this part is called the ascending ascending colon right first part cecum then we have also appendix then there is ascending colon right this part where it is it becomes like this right where the large intestine becomes like this so this is called as it is present on the right side of the body right side of the abdomen so this is called right colic flexure right colic yes this is called right colic flexure this is right colic flexure then here the the large intestine goes in transverse manner that's why it is called the transverse transverse colon right this is transverse colon then this part as it is present on the left side so that's why this is called left colic flexure left colic flexure right this is called left left colic flexure then the large intestine is coming again down this part is called the descending descending colon descending colon right then we have this part this is called the sigmoid sigmoid colon sigmoid colon then we have the large the, the last part that is called the uh, rectum yes this is called the rectum then this part is called the anal canal this is the anal canal and this last part is called the this outer opening is called the anus clear listen carefully uh, in between the rectum and sigmoid colon sigmoid colon here is again the flexure this is called sigmoid flexure right so these are the parts of the uh, large intestine let us write them first part is cecum second part appendix third part yes ascending ascending colon fourth part right colic flexure right colic flexure fifth part is transverse transverse colon sixth part is left colic flexure left colic flexure seventh part is again descending descending colon eighth part sigmoid sigmoid colon nine there is rectum rectum then number 10 there is the anal canal anal canal in the 11 that is called the anus anus right so these are the main parts of the large intestine the first part is cecum then there is appendix the small projection of the cecum uh, then there is ascending colon when the colon or large intestine goes up so this is called ascending colon then the there is a curve point this is called right colic flexure then there is a transverse colon then there is left colic flexure then descending colon then we have descending colon then we have sigmoid colon this is the sigmoid colon then there is rectum where the stool is uh, or the feces are stored and then there is anal canal and the last part is the anus right so in this diagram i have shown some parts of the large intestine now we move after discussing about what is large intestine what is its length what are the diameters and the length of each part of the large intestine and the main parts of the large intestine let's focus on the arterial supply of large intestine which arteries are 
supplying our large intestine okay so arterial supply arterial supply of large intestine clear so friends uh, as we know that from our abdominal aorta from our abdominal aorta there is a big first branch this is called celiac trunk then there is another a large uh, branch uh, separating from the abdominal aorta interiorly and then there is a uh, lower big branch which is separating from the abdominal aorta this big branch is called the celiac trunk celiac trunk this one is called superior superior mesenteric superior mesenteric artery and uh, this one is called inferior inferior mesenteric mesenteric artery right inferior mesenteric artery so our large intestine mostly our large intestine is taking its arterial supply from inferior mesenteric artery and superior mesenteric artery clear so from the superior mesenteric artery and inferior mesenteric artery there are branches which are called right colic artery right colic artery then there is left colic arteries right and then there is middle middle colic artery clear friends so our large intestine is taking its uh, uh, blood supply from superior and inferior mesenteric arteries from these two arteries there are small branches which are right colic artery left colic artery and middle colic artery these three arteries give small branches to the uh, large intestine and supply it with the oxygenated blood clear now we come what is the venous drainage of large intestine venous drainage of large intestine venous drainage of large intestine clear okay so the venous drainage of our large intestine as there are superior mesenteric artery and superior mesenteric vein so uh, in superior mesenteric artery and inferior mesenteric artery venous drainage is also carried by superior superior generally superior mesenteric vein and inferior inferior mesenteric inferior mesenteric vein clear so these two veins these two big veins are uh, responsible for the venous drainage of the uh, large intestine now we come what is the innervation of large innervation of large intestine innervations of large intestine so friends our large intestine gets sympathetic and parasympathetic innervations so its parasympathetic activity its parasympathetic innervation is provided by the branches coming from vagus nerve vagus nerve and there is another uh, uh, plexus that is called pelvic plexus pelvic splanchnic splanchnic nerve so from from pelvic splanchnic nerve there are branches and from vagus nerve there are branches coming and they are supplying parasympathetically to the large intestine right what is the sympathetic supply of uh, large intestine sympathetic innervation of large intestine sympathetic innervation is provided by greater splanchnic nerve and lesser splanchnic nerve 
greater splanchnic nerve greater splanchnic nerve and lesser splanchnic nerve clear friends this is the innervations of the small, large intestine clear so this was about the arterial supply venous drainage and innervations of the large intestine now friends as we are looking at our large intestine grossly we can see some main uh, structures some main points uh, which uh, we can see with our own eyes so let's uh, discuss those main uh, some external features of large intestine as in the diagram i will show what are those external features they can that should be recognized so look at this diagram i'm drawing this diagram very very small diagram uh, as our large intestine is like this i am drawing just a little part of the large intestine as our large intestine is like this right so let me uh, complete it clear our large intestine is has some parts like this so listen friends these parts these expanded parts these parts i am discussing some external features of large intestine external features what are some external features of large intestine the first feature look these are the this is the first feature look we can see these expanded parts right friends these expanded parts are like sacs are like sacs so they are small small sacs these are called the first external feature that we can see in our large intestine are called saccules saccules right these small small bags these small small sacs are called saccules clear okay the next external feature that we can see in our large intestine look carefully in between the two saccules there are these depressions these depression points clear friends okay this is the saccule this is the saccule in between the two saccules these depressions are called sulci clear these depressions are called sulci so we can see saccules these uh, expanded parts of the large intestine are called saccules and in between the two expanded parts we can see these depressions uh, these are called sulci number 3 number 3 we can see uh, some fatty lobules we can see some fatty lobules uh, from outside of the large intestine we can see some fatty lobules uh, uh, attached to our large intestine these fatty lobules are called appendices epiploici appendices epiploici clear so we can see next appendices appendices epiploici right what are appendices epiploici appendices epiploici are the lob fat lobules uh, which are attached to the large intestine from outside okay next we can see next we can see uh, tenia what is tenia tenia means ribbon tenia means ribbon and as we know ribbon is an elastic substance now look carefully friends uh here if this is our large intestine now look carefully here is a ribbon like this here is a tenia like this moving up right and 
like coming down like this right what is it made up of it is a ribbon like structure and it is made up of smooth muscles it is made up of smooth muscles clear uh tinea is a ribbon it is made up of smooth muscles and the contraction of these smooth muscles will cause the contraction of this ribbon and the contraction of this ribbon will cause the contraction of the large intestine right so tinea how many tinea are tinea are three there are three tinea or ribbon like structures uh, around the uh, three uh, angles of our large intestine there is tinea libra there is tinea libra there is tinea tinea mesocoli mesocoli right there is tinea mesocoli and the third one is tinea tinea omentalis tinea omentalis right so uh, as i told you tinea means ribbon this ribbon is formed by smooth muscles and the this ribbon goes like this from three sides one from here one from inner side and one from posterior side so these tinea or these ribbons are called tinea libra tinea mesa coli and tinea omen talus clear friends so these were some external features related to as we are seeing our large intestine so we have to recognize these uh, external features what are these these expanded parts these expanded sacs are called sacules in between the two sacs there are some small depressions which are called sulci then there are some fat lobules attached to our small or large intestine these are called appendices epiploici and there is a ribbon like structure on the three sides of our large intestine this is called tinea and these tinea are tinea libra tinea mesocoli and tinea omen talus clear friends so this was a brief uh, about large intestine i hope uh, you got something from it and i hope you like the video so friends if you like our video please subscribe our channel thank you so much